What's up guys, in this video, I'm going to tell you why I'm racist and why I hope you die from COVID-19. Those are both true things. I hate other races, other religions. I hate them so much. And not only that, I really hope none of you are practicing social distancing. And I hope you're all coughing, sneezing on each other and spitting in each other's mouths like on South Park. And you're going around and using racial slurs and um, committing hate crimes and bullying people online. That's another good one. Um, I hope you're all doing those things. And I just wanted to come out and tell you that I'm, I'm, a, um, I'm in favor of all of those things because I just, I, you know, I just want you guys to know that because of what's going on in the world. Okay, just kidding. I'm actually not in favor of those things. But the reason I, I say that, it sounds ridiculous to say that, right? Uh, the reason I actually say that is because I'm sure you've noticed because you're all at home doing nothing, most of you, unless you're essential workers at McDonald's, um, you're online. You get probably a lot more emails from the companies that you get emails from. I don't know about you. I've got like 50,000 emails in my inbox I haven't read. I don't delete emails, by the way. Uh, also, don't delete comments. Also, quick little side note. Some people have been telling me lately, they're like, why'd you delete my comment? How could you do that? I never delete any comments, right? The, the one type of comment that I will delete, this is the only type of comment that I remove, are ones on some extremely controversial videos, like some of the anorexia videos, where they're like, hey guys, let's get all get together and ban this guy's channel. That's the only type of comment that I will remove because I believe that that could potentially lead to mob mentality, right? And I don't want to deal with that. Because once you've got the mob mentality, then like, you know, when, when you have an intolerant minority, uh, an intolerant, a small group of intolerant people who make a lot of noise and bitch, um, that uh, corporations respond to that sensitively, or they're sensitive to that, I guess, and I don't want to deal with it. But other than that, leave a comment, call me an asshole, call me fucking gay, like, I don't give a fuck, whatever you want, doesn't matter to me. Anyway, um, the other thing, right, about being racist and fucking COVID-19 and all that shit. Like, why do I bring this up? Because the past couple months, getting all these emails and I see all this shit and all these stores where all these companies are like, we take your safety to be our number one priority. That's why we're practicing social distancing. And we think we're, we're making all of our customers wear masks. And we're doing this and we're doing that because we care about your safety. It's pandering and it makes me fucking sick. There's there's one thing, well, there's a lot of things. <laughs> there's a lot of things I hate and it drive me crazy, but I, I cannot stand pandering. And like corporate pandering, I guess, is the best way to put it. Like pandering from corporations to the masses, I guess. Who are, who are these masses anyway? Like dumb housewives who order shit online? Like I don't even fucking really know. Like who are these retarded people? Uh, but anyway, I can't stand the pandering, right? The, the COVID-19 pandering, I thought was the worst, right? Every single website, like we take your, we take your health and safety so seriously. Like we're canceling everything and we're just going to lose money for the next six months because we don't fucking care. And like, but we want you to at least know that we're making a sacrifice here and you should still love us and respect us, even though we'll probably go out of business. Um, I see this everywhere, right? Like I was supposed to go do some trade shows. I checked the, the websites of these trade shows and they all say the same shit, right? Fucking even like my like web hosting company has some fucking dumb shit about COVID-19. Like everyone's just trying to cash in on it, right? This whole thing. The reason this is even going as long as it has been going, the fucking quote unquote pandemic is because now it's an additional avenue for marketing, right? It's, it's an additional trigger for people or companies to use to effectively market, right? Similar to the Black Lives Matter thing, right? I'm not saying the movement doesn't have any credibility, blah, blah, blah. I'm saying that companies are using, or I would say misusing, the um, the emotional response that the name, I guess Black Lives Matter or COVID-19 or whatever fucking trigger word you wanna pick, those just happen to be the two hot ones of 2020. Um, they're misusing that to market to their uh, customers or um, they're using it to, I guess, help their, uh, well, I can't even talk today, I'm fucking out of it, uh, to help their or, or to assist their customers into identifying um, with the company on a deeper level, I guess is the best way to put it, right? Like, for example, and it, it's pretty obvious, like, do you not understand what I'm talking about, right? Like, on I was on Bumble, fucking Bumble of all places, and I, I'm like looking and it's like, Bumble said something like, we support Black Lives Matter. And I was like, it's a fucking dating app. Like, why, you know, 
the COVID-19 thing, okay, I get it, right? Like, you don't want to be meeting in person, theoretically, if there actually was a fucking zombie apocalypse pandemic. But there isn't. But, of course, they have to say, you know, you can't come out on Bumble, which is an app, theoretically, for people to meet each other in person. You can't be like, oh, don't worry about that shit, guys. Like, just go on your d dates as usual, right? They've got this, like, video dating thing now. It's a complete joke. I don't get any matches anyway, so I'm not worried about it. I'm not bitter. Maybe a little bit. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's just a joke, man. Like, why you gotta pander so much? Like, how dumb are people that they believe that, right? And I'm just, I'm just wondering, because those two causes, let's call them, I personally don't happen to identify with, I guess. But I'm wondering if, let's say there was a cause that I did identify, like, let's say I was all about fucking Black Lives Matter. Let's just say that. And I saw that on Bumble. I, I probably would identify with them more. I'm like, wow, Bumble's such a great company. I fucking love Bumble, you know? But who are these people who, who attach so much loyalty to a company that's just trying to fucking make money off of you? Like, how dumb are you? Anyway, the point of this video is that it's so, it's so transparent what these companies are trying to do. Because none of them, let's talk about the COVID-19, let's go back to that for a second. It's so obvious that nobody has any idea at all about how to actually be healthy. It's crazy to me. It's actually insane to me that people don't fucking have any idea what actually determines if you get sick or if you don't get sick or if you die from some fucking disease, disease, virus, if you die from some virus at a young age or at an old age. Nobody, nobody actually understands that, again, I made a video on this. The path to health is the same for everybody, regardless of your situation. You're old, you're young, you have diabetes, you're obese, you're a fucking whatever t child. Like, it's the same. You eat healthy food, you exercise, you avoid unhealthy food, and I guess you manage your caloric intake. I like to say eat once a day in order to do that, but whatever. Don't eat too many calories, I guess is the best way to put it. And eat healthy food. But but that simple fact escapes people and and... Americans are so easily manipulated by the media that they don't think, right? And, and this is the problem when you have, um, Nassim Taleb calls it an intolerant minority, right? Which is like, not, not, a, not a minority, not like a racial minority per se, although I guess it could be a racial minority. But the example that he gives, I think it's his book, Skin in the Game, it's his most recent book, where he talks about um, how, he gives two examples, right? In England, you have... Um, a lot, uh, like, despite the fact that, like, relative to the normal population, you have, like, a million Muslims or something like that, and Great Britain has, it's like, 60 million people, and only a million of them are Muslims, or two million or something like that, yet you see a disproportionately large amount of halal restaurants, or restaurants that are halal, or, like, offer halal food or halal menu options, right, despite the fact that, like, the Muslim population of Great Britain is not the majority, it's a minority, and like, you know, the, the ones who are like hardcore practicing who, who only eat halal food, you know, is, is probably smaller than that. It's for sure smaller than that. Not every single one only eats halal, right? They don't all do it. Um, but because you have an intolerant minority, because you have a group of people who definitely will only eat halal food and will not eat anything that's not halal, you have all of these restaurants who are like, well, we don't want to alienate these people. N not because like we want them to feel bad that they couldn't eat at our restaurant because we want to make money off of them. We want their money. Right. So like, OK, fuck it. Like, how much does it cost for us to get halal meat instead of, you know, regular fucking Chinese meat or whatever? And if if, if the if the um, additional cost makes sense, right, if, if the numbers work out and they'll make more money, even if they spend a couple cents more per pound or whatever it is, halal meat's not that expensive. Um, they'll just make the switch and they'll just say, oh, we're also halal. Right. So then what ends up happening is because of this small group of people, relatively small group of people, um, who are intolerant, let's say, who, who are not tolerant of eating non-halal food, you've got all of these restaurants now switching to halal, right? A, a, a simpler example, I guess, in the United States would be the organic thing, right? Organic um, vegetables, for example, right? You have some people, and organic now, like, it's kind of fallen out of vogue, I guess, like, because it's been shown that, like, the stuff they say is organic, it's not really organic, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, but a couple of years ago it was like, oh, there's some people they'll only buy organic, right? So even though that's not a major percentage of the population, companies that produce food don't want to alienate that group of people. So now they make fucking everything organic and they pay the extra fucking three cents or whatever it is to be able to write on the label that it's organic. Okay. So 
that's um has something to do with what I was talking about earlier. I don't even fucking remember. I'm tired. I was up late last night. No, I wasn't. I was just eating a lot of food yesterday. All right, great story. I'm ending this video. Ugh, I shouldn't even upload this one. Anyway, let's focus. The point is this. What is my point? Um, yeah, I need some coffee. That's my point. I need some coffee. The point is this. Companies are pandering to people because they are trying to appeal to the intolerant minority of fucking crazy, stupid, fucking COVID-19 crybaby little bitches who don't have anything to, I, who I don't have any idea about how to actually manage and maintain their health. And I guess, is it racist for me to say like the Black Lives Matter people? Well, to the, how can I put this in a politically correct way? To the, um, the Black Lives Matter activists who are extremely vocal and have the support of the mainstream media and have a very powerful, let's call it underground guerrilla marketing lobby. Um, they have to like appease them, I guess, because if, if they don't, oh my God, like whatever, if, if they, if a company doesn't say that they're just on the safe side by saying that, right. If they don't say it, then it's like, oh my God, why didn't Tinder say that black lives matter? Is Tinder a racist white supremacist alt-right company? you know, hashtag delete Tinder, something like that, some retarded shit. So anyway, companies are just on the safe side. But the problem is that what this does is this reinforces the, I guess, perceived legitimacy of these two things. Uh, and you know, I'm, I don't, I don't want to get into like political ramifications, but like, it's not like a social discussion or anything. But um, it, it, it reinforces like unquestioning uh, belief in these two things where I think in any movement, right, I think that it should be open for discussion, right? I'm not saying like police brutality against blacks or whatever is not, um, I guess, more prevalent, but you have to open this up for discussion, right? You can't just say like, well, that's how it is. And if you don't agree with that, then you're racist. And like, I'm going to ruin your career, you know, period. Um, you have to look at like some of the, the nuances of the situation, like uh, maybe a disproportionate amount of criminals are black, maybe, right? So like, the numbers would work out, you know, there, there would be more violence against them because there would be more violence against criminals as a whole and criminals as a whole, you know, most of them, I don't really know about the numbers, right. But I'm, I'm sure in certain cities, most of them are black, right? Like, I don't think you need to be a fucking census bureau administrative representative to like fucking know that. Okay. So that's my really awesome video today. If you have any questions, comments, let me know, leave me a comment. Peace.